questions and just kind of use this as a, as a review here, okay? So we finished off, I think, with types of lines that are vertical or horizontal, so here's the idea. All right, so if the line is just x equals a number, it's just x equals a number, that means that it goes through x and it doesn't touch y. So if you only go through x, you have to go that way. Does that make sense? It's the only possibility, okay? And if you have a y, but you don't have an x, then the graph has to go like this. Okay, it only touches the x, the y-axis then, okay? And then if you have two variables, so if you got two variables, then you're going to slant. Okay, so this is what I want you to get down with this, because it's not hard, but you've got to have ways to sort this stuff out in your head so you remember it. So this is y equals 2. What y equals 2 means is you're going to go through the y-axis touching 2. You're never going to come in contact with x because there's no x in the equation. Okay, that's one of the best ways to learn that. This is x equals negative 4. So what do you do? You go through x and never touch y because there's not a y in the equation anyway. Tell me if that makes any sense. Okay, don't get these backwards. Think about it. Now, this one right here, it's going to cross x and it's going to cross y. So that means it's going to have both variables, okay? Tell me if that makes sense. Shake your head, something, okay? All right, x goes, if it's y equals, it goes this way, through y. x equals goes this way and slants like that, okay? You guys okay? All right, you okay? All right, so let's go to the next page then. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to do some intercepts on here. And uh, so what we're going to do on this is you got an equation. We're going to find both the x and the y intercepts. So what you do is what you need to understand is to find an x-intercept, you set y equals 0, and we'll talk about why that is. So go ahead and write down the equation. Everybody write down the equation that we're working with. And what I'm going to have you do is I'm going to have you replace y with 0. So that's 3x plus 4 times 0 equals 12. Okay, That's going to cross out. That goes to 0, so you have 3x plus 0 equals 12, and then you have 3x equals 12. Okay? All right. Now, what you're going to do is solve that for x. In your head, what's the answer to that equation? 4. four. Good. Okay, you can divide by 3, you can divide by 3, so you get x equals 4. All right? So what I want you to do is on the graph I gave you, just go to the x-axis and right on the x-axis, put 4. Okay, like that. That's the x-intercept. And you write the x-intercept. I like you to write, write it as a point four zero. See, basically what happens if you have an x-intercept, you have an x-value, but y is 0 because you're on the x-axis. Okay, that's how that works. Okay? Now, what we do at the next one, we're going to do the y-intercept. So again, just write down the equation that I gave you. And then this time, what you're going to do is you're going to replace x with 0. So you have 3 times 0 plus 4y is equal to 12. Okay, go ahead and write that down. Let's get that put together. So that's going to be 0 plus 4y equals 12. That gives 4y equals 12. All right, in your head, what's y? 3, okay, all right? You're, sometimes you can do it in your head. So if I just divide by 4, I'm going to get y equals 3. So then what I'd want you to do is put a dot right on the y-axis, then draw your line, okay? A lot of times students don't draw the line. We're graphing lines, so it's got to be a line, and put the double arrows at the end because you're showing that it goes on forever, okay? You'd write your y-intercept as 0, 3 like that. Okay, that's how you do that, all right? And again, you get, your goal is to understand stuff because uh, the, one of the reasons students forget math a lot is because they don't deeply understand it. So all this means is if you're on the x-axis, y is 0. Does that make sense? If you're on the y-axis, x is 0. That's what that means, okay? So that would be what your graph looks like. It's a picture of the solutions, okay? All right, any questions about that? All right, let's go to the, the next one here. Just do the same thing. So I would like you guys to try to repeat what I just did on that second one and see what you get on that. Go ahead and go for it. I'll give you a couple of minutes to see if you can get that okay, All right? So I just kind of follow the procedure and we'll, should be okay with that, hopefully. You need something? What's that? Uh, over there. I should have given that out last time.
And I'm going to show you in a minute, a lot of these problems sometimes you can do them in your head, and I'm going to show you how to do that in just a minute here. Uh, do we have the x-intercept? What'd you get? Negative 4. Did you have the y-intercept yet? Negative 2. Good. Okay. So you started off like that, and of course you, can, you don't have to write that because that cancels out, so you would have negative 2x equals 8, then you would divide by negative 2, so you have x equals negative 4. Okay. So again, your y-intercept, anytime you have a y-intercept, y is 0, you find x that causes y to be 0. That's the idea. Same thing here, that'll go to 0, so it's negative 4y equals 8. You can divide by negative 4, and that would be y equals negative 2. So on an x-intercept, you find y when x is 0. Okay? And then graphing's easy. Put a dot on negative 4, put y-axis, connect the dots, and then you got it. Okay, that's how you do that. All right? Now let me show you this also, because there are times on these problems that you can do this in your head. Okay, it's actually nice to do this in your head. This is called a standard form of linear equation. So if you want to find an x-intercept, you can just block off the y because you're setting it equal to 0. Okay? And then solve that equation in your head. You see what I mean? If you want to find an x-intercept, you can block that off and solve that in your head. Okay, so if it's in standard form, that's how you find x. That's how you find y. All right? You can do it in your head. All right? But that's how the process of doing that. All right, is everybody okay with that? Does anybody have a question or need clarification on that? Okay. All right. So now we're going to kind of, this is kind of an overview of the formulas. So we've learned, uh, we've gone over the slope formula, gone over point slope. And this standard form is like this. That's kind of like what we were just working. So an example of standard form would be this. Okay, anytime that you have just x and y together on the left side equals a number that's standard form. Usually we like that number to be positive, okay? Now, I want to see if you caught on to what I just taught you. If you block that off, tell me what the x-intercept is in your head. Four. What's the y-intercept? Three. See, sometimes it's that easy, okay? And you can process in your head. This turns out to be a lot in the applications we're going to do. You're going to see it work with a lot of lines, so you want to be able to figure out those intercepts a lot of times in your head, okay? All right? Now, let's go to the next thing. We're going to put stuff in standard form. So if we go to the next page, when I, when I want you to put something in standard form, all it means is x's and y's on the left side, number on the right side, and make sure that this number right here, you might want to make a note to yourself on this, uh, is that a has to be greater than 0. Okay, That needs to be a positive number. That's what we mean by standard form. And learn to do this just kind of in your head. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just move the 2x to this side. When I move that, the sign changes, so I have 2x plus y equals 4. Does that look like standard form? It's got everything you need. You've got x and y on the left. The number in front of x is positive. Therefore, that's what we want. Sometimes it's just a matter of rearranging things like that. All right? Okay? All right, now the next thing I'm going to do, the next one I'm going to do kind of the same way, we want to move the x over here, and, I, and when I move the negative 1 fourth, it changes to positive 1 fourth x plus y equals negative 8. Okay? Now, really, that's okay. I mean, to me, that is, is okay. The other thing that you can do is how would you make that fraction go away? Not, you could. You multiply by 4, right? So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, generally, we prefer to get rid of fractions, okay? So if we do this, it would go like this. So if you take 4 times a fourth, that's going to be x. And then if you take 4 times y, that's going to be 4y. And then that's equal to negative 32. Now, you could get rid of the fraction at any step in that problem, but that would be the preferred answer of that problem, then, like that, okay? So standard form, what you're going to know is it's x's and y's on the left equals a number. And whatever's in front of x needs to be positive and try to get rid of fractions. Okay, is everybody okay? Okay, okay. And clear in what I'm trying to tell you there. Okay? All right. So go ahead and do these. It shouldn't take you too much time. Just Those are not in standard form. So just kind of repeat what I just did. On number two, be sure you get rid of the fraction. Let's make sure we're all on top of this then, okay? Thank you. 
Then we're going to look at a couple of couple of applications on this, and then I'm going to then we'll get started on the next section here. So the problem number one, one step and you're done, right? What's the answer to problem number one? 6x plus 2y equals negative 10, right? Okay, so all you got to do is get the x's together. So the, yeah, that one you just do in your head. When you move that, it becomes positive 6x plus 2y equals negative 10. Okay, so that's how that goes. Okay, next one. Start it the same way. Just move the x. So that is negative 2 thirds x plus y is equal to negative 10. Okay, what did I say about the number in front of x? Did you catch that? Yeah, it has to be positive, right? And you want to get rid of a fraction. So what you really want to do on this then, you could do this in one step. If I want this to go away, if I want negative 2 thirds to go away, well I can multiply by 3 to make that happen, right? And it just goes. You don't have to multiply by the reciprocal because you would still have a fraction. It's the 3 you want to go away. Now, if I want this to become negative, or I'm sorry, positive, how about if I multiply by negative 3? Wouldn't that make that positive? Because a negative times negative is a positive, so that's the way I would do that, right? So if you do that, if, when you do the distributive property, you would go negative 3 over 1, and you can do this in your head, times negative 2 thirds x, and then minus 3y is equal to negative 10. Okay, that's how that goes, all right? Now we're almost done. So what is this thing right here going to become in your head? Two. It's two, isn't it? Okay, because what happens is those cancel out, right? Then you have a negative times a negative to give you 2x. So that would be 2x minus 3y is equal to negative 10. Okay, that's how you rewrite that in standard form. You could do it in more steps if you wanted to. You can get rid of that fraction right at the beginning if you want to. Yes? Don't you have to multiply? Ah, okay. Teacher did something really not smart. Okay, I was just checking. Okay, negative 3. Okay, so tell me what the right side is. 30. Thank you very much. So let me correct that. Absolutely. What you got to do to one side, you got to do the same thing to the other side. Now we're good. Now it's the same thing. Okay? All right. Any questions on that? Okay. All right. You'll do that quite a bit. The more common thing is you're, get, you're given something in standard form and you solve it for y. But you want to be able to do that both ways. Okay. So now we're, we're going to begin to get into a little bit more applications today because we've kind of been working on the fundamentals of graphing because we're going to do that a ton in this class when we're looking at applications. So typically in business, a cost function can be, take on different values, but generally what it is, is it's, uh, it's linear, okay? All right, so what we have is M is going to be the slope, okay? That's gonna be an average rate of change, so you're gonna think of that as a rate of change, and then B is the y-intercept, but what it really is is it's a fixed cost. Okay, that's what that is. Okay, All right. So uh, what you're going to see usually on a, a cost function is you're going to see a line. That's the idea. Okay. So let's go to the next uh, page and let's start putting this together then. All right. So one of the things that we have on this, you want to be able to read this and assimilate the information. It says the company is manufacturing picnic tables. And then the key thing is I've given you a fixed cost. Okay, and that is really the y-intercept. You might make a note to yourself, because anytime you see that, that's going to be a y-intercept. And then the variable cost is $45 per table. So what that represents is, is the slope. Okay, so what you have is you have the formula y equals mx plus b is, is the formula for a linear equation, right? Okay, so what you would do is what would b be if it's the y-intercept? That'd be 1,200, right? What would M be? It's the slope, so what did I say that was? 45. So what you'd have is you'd really have 
uh, y equals 45x plus 1,200. All right, so you can write it that way. And you can use x and y, or you could use other variables if you want to, okay? So what I'm going to actually have you do is this, and you do this in business. You want sensible variables. Y is the cost, so I'm just going to say C equals 45x plus 1,200. Now, that's a personal choice on your matter. You could leave it with x and y if you wanted to, but that should be the answer to the problem. Okay? Okay, thanks. Okay? All right. So that would be how you put that together. Now, we're going to answer a question about this then. Okay? So, is everybody with me? I got some people with low attention spans in this class. Holy cow. Okay? I see that the younger my students are, the less it's getting. Okay, hey, that's college. You got, you got a, the teachers, everything's condensed in college. Okay, so there isn't a lot of time to, you know, play around with stuff. Okay, but man, I'm here to, to help get you on track. So cell phones and stuff like that, man, put them away. You can survive without a cell phone for an hour or two. I know you can do it. Okay, that's my spiel for today. Okay, come on. All right, let's take a look at this then. How many picnic tables can be produced for a totally total weekly cost of $4,800? Now, look at my equation right here. Okay, what are you going to do with the $4,800? What does the $4,800 represent? C. It represents C. Good. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to replace that C with $4,800, and that's equal to 45X plus 1,200. Okay, like that. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to solve for x. Why x? Because that's what how many picnic tables is. That's what x is. So you want to go ahead and solve that equation for x then. So if we solve for x, you know, you're going to subtract 1,200 from both sides. All right, I'll do that. Let's see. That would be what? 3,600 is equal to 45x like that. Okay, so you're going to solve equations. It's a basic fundamental skill when you're looking at applications. So we divide by 45, and I can take my calculator and do that. You'll be able to use your calculator, of course, all the time in this class. You'll need to. And then we have 3,600 divided by 45, and that's going to be 80. So what we get is we get x equals 80. Okay? So that means if you sell uh, 80 picnic tables, then it produces, that's how much it costs. Okay? That's a linear cost function. Everybody understand that okay? So if it's a linear cost function, you immediately think y equals mx plus b. What's the fixed cost? Y-intercept. What's the variable cost? Slope. You will see that throughout the semester, and you want to make sure you have that in mind. Okay, if you brought your cal graphing calculator, and I hope you're doing that because you need to start doing that, then please get that out uh, because what we're going to need to do um, Today, we're going to do a bunch of stuff on the graphing calculator. Let me open this thing back up because it looks like it's going to crash. Oh, this just drives me crazy. <laughs> what am I in? I pressed a button that changed the mode the wrong way or something. Uh, sometimes I just accidentally, pr I don't know what button I hit, <laughs> but it messes everything up all of a sudden. Now I can't do anything on this. I can't even get to OneNote or anything. I don't even want me size it or anything. Here it goes, finally. You ever notice, like on Microsoft, when there's an update, that it fixes something and screws something else up? I see, I see that a lot. I, so I always blame it on Bill Gates. I mean, it's like all these problems come from Mr. Bill Gates. I don't think he listens to me. But updates are good, and then they screw something else up, it always seems like. Okay, so, uh, yeah, let's go down, uh, and let's go ahead and get this on the calculator now. So I think I'm okay. Um Okay, yeah, I got your calculator out. 
And what you want to do is just, we're going to put in that cost function. So do this with me, because it's kind of important you do this with me in class. So you're going to go y equals and put in 45x and then plus 1,200. Okay, like that. Okay, you're going to put that in, and we're going to graph this now. So one of the things that we're going to do on this is also, on this we got to set up some sort of a window. So what we want to do is when you're doing a graph, Go ahead and get your graph set up, and we're only going to be interested in kind of the upper right-hand side of that. One thing that you always got to do is you got to label what everything means, okay? You have to, all right? So what X is, put X there, and what X is, is that represents the number of picnic tables. And you have to uh, do that because otherwise you're not telling me what the graph means, okay? Well, that's just what you do in the real world with graphs, okay? So that's number of picnic tables. Okay, what was the y-axis? Well, that was C, so we just say that's the cost, like that, okay? Now, what we're going to do on this, this is a line, all right? And one of the reasons that you have to learn functions as well as you do, because a lot of times students say, well, how do I know how to scale this and everything? Tell me what that, the meaning of that 1,200 is in this graph. What is it? It's the y-intercept, right? So that means you're going to have a dot at 1,200. And what's that 45 going to cause the graph to do? It's going to go up 45 over 1, right? So it's going to be sloping like that. So that's why you have to understand the structure of the equation. So this is what this would tell me. Uh, on the graphing calculator, a good thing to do, and you just kind of have to take a reasonable guess on this, what I'm going to have you all do is just go, go to your window button and then go 0 to 100. Okay, well, let's just do that. The I don't think the directions to the problem say anything about what X is. Scale it by 10, so I go 10, 20, 30, 40, and so forth like that. Okay? All right. Now, Y, we're going to go 0. Now, you're going to need a number bigger than 1,200. Agreed? So let's go to maybe 2,000 or something. Okay? We just want to get a pretty decent graph. So let's go to 2,000, and maybe we scale that by 500. It's kind of your choice on how you scale stuff. Okay? So 0 to 100 on x, 0 to 2,000. Is that logical? Do you see what my thought process is? It's mostly the 1,200s telling me how to make y. Now if you press graph on this, you'll have a line going up like that. Now what I would like to probably do on that is it's sloping pretty steep. So what I'd probably could do on this, I'm going to raise my y-axis. Okay, I'm going to do that for that reason. So you have to learn how to adjust stuff. So go back to your window. And instead of going 2,000, well, let's go up to like 10,000 or something, okay? So let's go to 10,000, and then let's scale that by uh, 1,000 like that, 10,000. You see, I'm doing that just because I'd like to see more of the line, okay? Now if I type graph, okay, then that's kind of, that's a good-looking graph. You see what I mean? Okay? So here's what I want you to do, okay? On the graph that you're drawing, you're going to go out to 100, and then you can scale that. You know, it's kind of up to you. We can even just do this if you want to. You can just go 50 and 100. I'm okay with that. And then for your graph, we went all the way up to 10,000 like that. And you can do, you can just go 5,000 if you want to. That's kind of a personal decision like that. How many points does it take to draw an accurate line? It takes two, right? So all you really got to do on this is use the trace button on your calculator. So if you got that, you can go trace and just plug in an x value, like 0. We already know that is 1,200 because that's the y-intercept, okay? So what I'm going to do kind of here is kind of subdivide that, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, and then just kind of estimate where 1,200 is, okay, like that. And then I would trace probably at 100, like that, press Enter, and then that's going to go 5,700. So one thing I'd like you to do is plot out, a, you know, label a couple of points. That's 0 and 1,200. And then this one, you're going to go up 100 and then up 5,700, and then just label like that, okay? And then sketch it in like that, and then that's a good graph like that. One of the things students at this level of a class a lot of times don't do very accurate graphs, but if you're using a graphing calculator, you make it perfectly accurate. Okay, just get two points and label them like that. That's what I'd want that graph to look like. All right? Does anybody have a question about the calculator or anything? You guys need to be bringing one because I'm going to use it every day, and you need to be sure that you learn how to do all this. Because today we're going to get into learning how to 
come up with what's called a regression equation. You can't do that without a calculator. Okay. All right. So let's uh, let's go down to this here and put this last problem together here. Okay. So this one right here, let me read this. And again, you're kind of putting points together. You're trying to put together the linear functions and everything. So what it says is at a price of $9 per bushel, the supply is 36 million bushels. Okay, that's a piece of information that's making me think of a point. Then it also says the demand is 4,000 million bushels. And then there's another piece of information. At this price, 950, you have a supply of 41 million, 4,100 million, and a demand of that. So for each price, you have a supply and a demand. So what you're going to have is you're going to have equations that you're going to build. Now, this is going to be putting together what we did in class Tuesday. Go ahead and go to the next page, and I'm going to start putting this together. Okay? So this is how you assimilate. And when you're doing word problems, you have to read it several times, get the idea of what's going on in the problem. So here's how you're going to put this together. We're going to look for points, and I'm going to kind of highlight as I go. So if we have this price, the supply is 3,600 million. Okay, now on part A, we're going to work with a supply equation. That's going to give you a point. The structure of this point is we're just going to go x, y, and we're going to say that the supply is going to be y, so that's going to be the supply, and then x is going to be, um, you can do this like this. You, that's, hold on, I got that backwards. And the reason is, is because the directions to the problem say p equals mx plus b, well, P is the price. So this is going to be the price. And then that's going to be uh, the supply, like that. OK, that's what I'm reading. That's going to give me a point C, OK? And probably more specifically, I, instead of having XY, I need to have XP. All right? So that's what that says. OK, so you're going to get points. So the first point we're going to get is $9, comma, and then 3,600, and it's in millions, but just leave it as 3,600, okay? Now, if you read on in this problem, we need to find the other thing that says something about supply. Now it says when your price is 950, the supply is this. That gives you another point, doesn't it, okay? So what we're going to have on this is the next point is going to be 950. Whoops, so I'm just going to write that as 9.5 like this. Okay, comma, and then that's going to be 4,100 like that. Okay, I found points by reading the problem. Does that make sense how I did that? Okay, gave you the equation, P equals MX plus B. Now, we did this last time. We're going to find an equation of a line, so you've got to do this methodology. The first thing you've got to do is you've got to find the slope. Okay, we went over this last time, so you find the slope by the slope formula, right? Okay. All right, so the slope formula is going to go like this. All right, so what we're going to do is going to subtract the y's. So remember, you can subtract the order of, that you do that. You're going to go 3,600 minus 4,100, and then do the x's in the same way. That's going to be 9 minus 9.5. Okay, we'll crunch that out with a calculator. We're just going to get what that value is then. Okay, so go ahead and do that. You can do that on your calculator. Uh, the numerator, if you, do, you can do that in your head if you want to. If you do 3,600 minus 4,100, that'll get that. That's negative 500, and then that's negative 0.5 like that. And then go ahead and just divide it out. So it's two negatives are going to divide to make a positive. So 500 divided by 0.5 is going to double that and make that 1,000. Okay. So what we have is the slope is equal to 1,000, Okay, like that. Does that look familiar? We did that in class last time. Yeah. What's that? Yeah, and you can do it in either order. So I did 3,600 minus 4,100 for the rise, the change of y, and I did this in the same order. You can also do it backwards. You can do 4,100 minus 3,600, but then you would do 9.5 minus 9. It's the same thing. That, the order you do that in doesn't make any difference. You just got to be consistent. Okay, so that makes sense? Okay, so that looks like that's what the slope is. Are you guys with me there? Okay, all right. Now, write this down. Here's the second thing you're going to do. You're going to do y minus y1 equals m times x minus 1. Write it down. 
Okay, now what you do on this, remember we learned how to do this last, last class, is you're going to plug the slope in, so that slope is 1,000, like that, and then you pick a point and plug it in. Okay, it's up to you which point you plug in, it'll give you the same answer anyway. So this x value of 9 is going to go here, and then that y value of 3,600 is going to go there. Does that look familiar? We did that in class last time. Now, the only difference with this is, is y is not, is you really need to use p there. Because that's what we're looking for is p equals mx plus b like that. That's what that is. Now, what we're going to do from here is we're going to do this. Okay? So, go ahead and let's finish it out together. That's going to be p minus 3600, get this written down, equals 1000 times x minus 9. Okay, like that. Now go ahead, let's solve this for P, and then we've got the answer to that part of the problem. So that's going to be P minus 3,600 equals 1,000X 1, minus 9,000, like this. Okay, then we're going to solve for P. So we want to add 3,600 to both sides, and that'll get us solved for P. So that's P equals 1,000X. And then you can take your calculator and do that, and then you got one answer to the problem. Okay, then, I'm, then we're going to move on to the next thing, which I'm going to help you kind of start with. Okay, so let's see, 3,600 and then minus uh, 9,000 will give you what we're looking for then. Okay, so we get minus uh, 5,400. Okay, so I did what I did on that is kind of what we were working on last time. So this is your supply equation. That's what that is. Okay, tell me. Give me a thumbs up, thumb down, some, thumb sideways or something. Okay, and tell me if you're catching on. Do you have anything that you have a question on? Okay, all right. Now, what I want to do with this next thing is I'm going to have you guys do part B, and it's almost the same thing, okay? And I want I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of erase, and I want you to read on here and highlight. We're doing the same thing, except now we're doing demand, okay? So this is what you need to look at. When you read this, it says a price of $9 gives a demand of $4,000, right? That's a point, right? Then take this, when you have a price of $3,500, that has a demand of $3,500. Now take it from there. You need to work, okay? All right? I start you and then you work, okay? That'll kind of keep you going and it'll help you process. So everybody, please try to take it from there. And then we'll kind of compare our answers and see if we're on the right track. Get right down your two points like I did, like this, and then try to go through finding the slope and uh, find the equation. Okay? Are we okay? Okay, very good. I'm going to find out. Did everybody sign the attendance today? Okay. Sign down. Let's go ahead and let's see what we get on this, and then we'll, then we'll talk about what we mean by equilibrium. Thank you. What are your two points? And just keep going. What are your two points? Nine, comma four thousand. Right. What's your other point? Nine fifty, comma thirty-five hundred. Okay. That's it. Find the slope, use the slope formula, then use the point slope formula. Okay, you're, going to do, you're going to do this kind of thing all the time during the semester. Okay. And then the second half class, we're going to kind of begin to learn how to do this on a calculator and do what we call a regression on Yeah? No. When you take 500 and divide by a half, which is 0.5, it doubles. Anytime you divide by half, it doubles the number. Okay. So that's what that is. Okay. Just kind of go through and get see if you can get your points written out, see if you can get your slope, and let's see how we're doing here. Okay. Real careful on that, that is negative 0.5. So you're going to have a negative slope on this one. What are we getting for the slope? Rip something out at me. Negative 
Negative 1,000. How many people are getting negative 1,000? Okay, that's good. Okay. And proceed from there. Once you get that slope, then you pick a point and plug in the point slope point. Okay. You got 1,000 over there? Yeah, it'll be negative 1,000. And it's because of uh, that becomes 500 divided by negative. So you got to be real careful with that. Usually one of the lines slopes up and the other one slopes down. Okay. And remember the slope formula, you subtract the y's. So you go this minus this over this minus this. That's the slope formula. Okay. You want to make sure you get that negative 1,000. And then next step, stage is can you do the point slope formula. Yeah, what? Negative 100. Oh, you, you may have done something wrong with your calculator. You do 500 divided by 0.5, to get you. Oh, yeah, okay, divided by 5. That's what I did. You did, uh, yeah, by 0.5. Anytime you divide by 0.5, the number doubles. So that's what happens. Now remember, it doesn't matter which point, which uh, point you plug in. Uh, where they cross, we're going to do that. We're going to do that in just a minute because we're going to do that graphically. Yeah, try to talk about what equilibrium is. That's negative. Be careful about that, and that comes from the fact that that's negative 0.5. Right, you gotta watch that now. Right? I've seen a couple of different answers. I got, I, I saw uh, 13,000, and I saw something else. So I'll, I'm, I'll look in just a minute. Does anybody have a final answer? Yeah. Okay. What do you have? What do you guys have? You have the negative 1,000x, and then what? 5,000. 5,000? What you have? Yeah, 13,000. 13,000? 13, 13, uh, Kareem, you have 13,000. Anybody else have 13,000? Oh, I'm supposed to. <laughs> I am supposed to. Hey, you could be the only right one. Okay. I, I think 13,000 is where we want to be. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and, and take a look and get that done. How many people got 13,000? A lot? Okay. All right. I think we're probably on the right track. Okay. So um, what I want to do on this then is the point goes like this. And just for the benefit of those of you not getting that, we have the points are 9, 4,000. And then uh, the other point is 9.5 and 3,500. Okay. When you do the slope formula... Again, it's always the Y's that you subtract first, and it's the you pick the order. It's up to you. I'm going to do 3,500 minus 4,000. Some of you did it backwards. But I'm going to also do the X's in the same order. And don't miss it by a negative, because if you do, you're going to mess up the whole problem. So if I do it this way, it's negative 500 divided by 0.5, and you do that on the calculator, that's where you get negative 1,000. So that's step one, okay? Some of you had the opposite of I had. You have 500 divided by negative 0.5, right? Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the point slope formula, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. I'm going to plug in the negative 1,000. Does it matter which point I use? No, you'll get the same answer. So I'm going to just go probably with 9, 4,000. The reason I would use 9, 4,000 is because it doesn't have any decimals in it. Okay, so it's just a little bit simpler. So I'm going to do put the 9 there, then I'm going to put the 4,000 here. So let's find out if that uh, 13,000 or whatever you got was right. So we have y minus 4,000 equals negative 1,000 times x minus 9. Okay, and I have y minus 4,000 here. Do a distributive property, so that's negative 1,000x, and then plus... 9,000. Okay, so I think we're on the right track. Okay, now 
add 4,000 to both sides, and then we'll have this. We'll have y equals negative 1,000x plus 13,000. So we got it. Good. Now, the only thing that you'd want to do on this then is they want this to be p instead of y. So the final answer would be p equals negative 1,000x plus 13,000. Okay, now that's a fundamental thing that you do when you're working with supply and demand. If they're linear, you do that all the time. Okay, you need a couple of data points to figure out what those equations are. All right, so how do you guys feel about that? Are we okay? I think some of you who didn't get the 13,000, all you did was probably one arithmetic mistake. That's it. Okay, all right, now we're going to move on to the graphing on this. And um, so what we want to do, we're going to do this on the graphing calculator. We'll talk about the equilibrium prob uh, point as I do this, okay? All right, so let's get our cal graphing calculator out, and we're going to do these two things, okay? And just let me know if you're, as I'm going through the calculator, always let me know if I need to uh, repeat something or something, okay? So what I'm going to do, because I want everybody to do this, because we're going to do this electronically, totally electronically, is uh, let's put our two things in. So our first answer on this, I need to fi find where I was on my answers. Okay, this one right here, 1,000x minus 5,400 was our first. So you want to go ahead and put in 1,000x and then minus 5,400. Okay, that, is the, um, that was the demand equation like that. Okay, all right. Then what we want to do on this is the other one that we just got was negative 1,000 x, and that was plus 13,000. Okay, so we're going to graph those two things and talk about what the equilibrium point is. Okay, all right. Now here's the thing. I want you're going to get, go through this all semester. You have to decide how you're going to do that window. Okay, so that's one of the reasons we're trying to get the functions down as good as we are. What is the meaning of the graph with that 13,000? What does that mean? That's the y-intercept, exactly. So that means your graph needs to go up to 13,000. If it has a negative slope, it's going to go like that, right? So that, that line right there is 13,000 and going down. You need to know that. And then this one right here, what's that doing? 5,400 below and going up. You guys understand that? So you want to, by looking, you want to know those things, okay? Now, so what I'm going to do for that reason is this. So press your window button, and we're going to go ahead and get the Y established, okay? We're at 5,400. Let's use negative 6,000, okay, for that. And then 13,000, well, let's use, let's use 15,000. I like that. And then let's scale that by a thousand. And that way you'll see the y-intercepts. Okay, that's what we're after with that. Okay. Now, as far as the x's go, I'm going to start with zero to a hundred. I'm probably going to have to adjust that, but I'm going to leave it alone for now. Everybody with me? Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to pick, do graph. You'll see one line going up and you'll see the other one going down there. Now what equilibrium means basically is this. It's kind of a break-even point right there, so it's where they cross. So basically, one of your equations is going up, one of them is decreasing, so that's your equilibrium point right there. Now, this is 100. That's 20. So what I'm going to do, the graph will look a lot better if you do this now. So if, you, if you're following with me, press your window button, and let's change that from 0 to 20, maybe by a scale of 5. That's an optimum way to do that. Then this the graph is going to look like it's a thing of beauty. Okay, but you got to have the ability to figure those windows out. Okay, now let's graph it, and then we're going to sketch a graph. I'm going to have you sketch a graph on your notes, and then what we'll do is I'll show you how to find the equilibrium point with your calculator. Are you with me? Okay, all right, go ahead and do this now. So what we're going to do is just draw yourself the axis. I like this, and always label what you have, okay? So let's see, on this particular problem, uh, we're talking about soybeans, and we're talking about a price, and we're talking about bushels. So this would be bushels of soybeans, okay? Don't just put X. That's not good enough, okay? We're attaching this to some meaning, so write that on there. And then what Y is, is Y is the price, okay, like that. 
So what we did on my calculator, we're going all the way up to 15,000 is what I was doing there. And you can just kind of scale it. Probably we can just on our graph that we're going to sketch, we can go like 5,000, 10,000, kind of like that. Okay. All right. Then what we want to do on this then is um, on this, let's say the X was going all the way out to 20 like this. So I'm just going to go 5, 10, 15, 20 like that. Okay. And then we're just going to get all it takes is two dots to get a line. Okay. So I learned to use this trace. Let's go ahead and do the red line first of all. So if you trace at zero, that gives you uh, the minus 54,000. Okay, so that's going to go down like this. That This thing needs to go down to about negative 5,400. And then, uh, then you're just going to put a dot like that. And then what I would do is I would trace out at 20. So if I trace at 20, and one thing I want you guys to see is, is you, I'm working on this equation that's in blue. So it's tracing that. So if I type trace 20, that'll give me a, a second point. So that's like... And let's just estimate that. That will be 20 and 14,600. Doesn't have to be perfect, but I do like you to label that as 20 and 14,600. Okay, like that. Okay, that gives that. Just connect the dots, and then you got that. Okay, it's hard to draw a line on this computer. So that's how that goes. Now do the other one. Okay, now when you do trace, watch this so that you know how to do this, because we got to trace out the values on the red line. So I go trace. Now look how I toggle up and down. If I press my down arrow, it goes to the red graph. If I go up, it goes to blue. Okay, so I'm going to trace the red one at zero. If I do that, that'll give the y-intercept we already knew. That's about 13,000. So at zero, 13,000. Okay, and then trace at 20 at the end of the graph just to kind of get us a, a good estimation. Okay, so I'm going to go trace 20. And that's about, um, whoops, i got to be on the red line, so i got to make it on the red one. That's negative 7,000. So I'm going to go like this and just label that point as 20 and negative 7,000. Like that. Okay, so that's what we got. So that's how your graph looks. Okay, are you? is everybody following what I'm doing on the calculator? Okay, with tracing and all that kind of stuff, okay? Because I, I ask that because some students don't have a very good background for it, and this is real important in this class. Okay, now what I'm going to show you on this is uh, is this, okay? And you probably need to write these keystrokes down on this because I didn't write it on your notes. I meant to. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the intersection point. Now, we're not going to do this algebraically. We're going to do it with technology is what we're going to do in this class. So what you want to do is, and I would write down the keystrokes, you want to go second, I'll write them down as we go, you would go second and then trace, second trace, okay, then you should see that you have an option five and it's intersect, okay, like that. So when you press that intersect, here's what you do. So you want to do that intersection. It'll say first curve. Use your left and right cursor key uh, to get close to that intersection point. Okay. Usually, I, your cursor can kind of pop up anywhere, so I just sort of move it in fairly close to the intersection point. Okay. It doesn't have to be perfectly close. That's probably good enough. Okay. Then what I do is I press enter. Okay. Then I just repeat the same thing. Okay. Now I've got a cursor on the red line. Just press yes. You just need to establish two points that are on each line fairly close. Press enter. And voila, what it'll do is it should take it a, there, there it goes, okay? So it's intersection. It should come out intersection, and that right there is your equilibrium point. So this right here, you want to label that as the equilibrium point, and that means 9.2, 3,800 is what you get. Now, we're trying to make as much meaning out of this as we can as students, okay? That's a, I want to see if you guys understand this. What do you think the 9.2 means? I mean, we want to understand the equilibrium point. What do you think? That's where everything, that's where you, uh, yeah. it's where your supply meets the, meets the demand. 
Right. Okay, they're the same. And nine nine point two is money, right? That's the price. So it's at a price of nine dollars and twenty cents, what does that mean? That's like your equal or that would be the uh, the number of bushels, right? So that would be the price that would cause everything to break even. Okay? That's what that means. All right. So that's what we call an equilibrium point. You also call it like a break-even point. We're going to do that throughout the semester, so we want to kind of get a, a basic idea. Okay, does that have any meaning to you? Okay, because a lot of times, you know, we show algebraic skills and the idea of points and lines, what you, uh, you analyze stuff. So in economics, you analyze stuff, and you analyze it mathematically and with computers and stuff like that. So that's kind of where we're going to begin with some of our applications is like that, okay? All right, we okay? Okay, take a well-deserved 10-minute break, okay? Come back, and then I'm going to get you the, sec the handout that we're going to do a lot of technology on, okay?